Imagine you're a gardener, and every time you garden, you pull out a giant notebook where you've written every single step of what to do. Dig here, water there, add more soil, take out the grass. It works fine at first, but the more plants you add, the heavier the notebook gets. It's messy, repetitive, and one tiny change means flipping through pages to rewrite everything. Hassle, right? Now, picture another approach. Instead of one massive notebook, you design self-sufficient plants. Each one already knows the basic of growing. You just tweak what makes it unique. The tomato says, I need more sun. The rose says, I'll need pruning. And the cactus says, just leave me alone. That in simple terms is what object-oriented programming is all about. Thinking of things as smart objects that handle themselves. But before we get too deep, let's compare this with the other style of programming so you can really see the difference. In programming, there are two ways to go about this. Procedural programming and object-oriented programming. Let's start with procedural programming. You're a gardener and you need to write down every single step you do in one giant notebook. For example, for planting a tomato in procedural programming, you have to Step 1, grab a shovel. Step 2, dig a hole 10 cm deep. Step 3, put the seed in the hole. Step 4, cover the hole with soil. Step 5, water daily. Step 6, place near sunlight. Then, when you plant a different kind of seed, you basically copy those steps again and again and again with tiny changes. Your notebook gets long, messy, and repetitive. It works! But if you lose your place or want to change something, you have to update every single step in every part of the notebook. And that's just a headache, isn't it? And then, there's object-oriented programming. And it's much, much different than procedural programming. Why write every little step again and again? Let's think of plants as objects. In your OOP garden, you create a plant blueprint, like a recipe for plants. It knows how to grow, how much water it needs, and what type of soil it prefers. Here is an example of the plant class in code. Then, you can make specific plants. Tomato, inherits from plant but needs extra sunlight. Rose, inherits from plant but needs pruning. Cactus, inherits from plant but barely needs water. Each plant is an object that knows how to take care of itself. You don't need to rewrite the whole how to grow a plant every time. You just reuse and customize the blueprint. Now, to be fair, procedural programming does have its advantages. It's simple, straightforward, and easy to start with. If you're only planting one or two seeds, the notebook method works just fine. It's suitable for small, simple programs where tasks are sequential. But as your garden or your program gets bigger and more complex, OOP saves you from repeating yourself endlessly and makes everything easier to maintain. So we know that OOP makes coding more organized and reusable. But how does it actually do that? It all starts with three basic concepts, class, object, and inheritance. A class is like a blueprint or recipe. When you design a plant class, you're not growing a real plant yet. You're just describing what any plant should have and what it should be able to do. For example, a plant class might say plants can grow, plants need sunlight, and plants need water. It's not a specific plant, it's just the idea of a plant. Now, an object is what you get when you use the class blueprint to actually create something. Think of it like printing a 3D model from a design. A tomato plant is an object. A rose is another object. A cactus is also an object. All of them come from the plant class, but once they exist, they are real things in your garden with their own characteristics. That way, you don't need to rewrite everything. You just reuse and customize. And here's where it gets really smart. Inheritance. This means one class can take on the features of another class, just like kids inherit traits from their parents. A tomato is a plant but it also needs extra sunlight. A rose is a plant but it also needs pruning. A cactus is a plant but it barely needs water. They all share the basics from the plant class but each adds its own twist. That way, you don't rewrite everything. You just reuse and customize. So to plant it all together, 
Procedural programming is like keeping a giant notebook where you copy every single step of gardening over and over. It works for small things, but as your garden grows, that notebook gets overwhelming. Object-oriented programming, on the other hand, is like creating blueprints for your plants. You grow specific plants from those blueprints, and thanks to inheritance, each plant knows how to handle itself. So OOP saves time by letting you reuse code, keep things organized and tidy, and it lets you focus on the bigger picture instead of repeating tiny details. Thank you for watching!